Hello and welcome to Margate in Kent for round three of the P1 Agricross Championships of 2013, which follows hard on the heels of some fantastic racing at the previous meeting in Plymouth. Dave Huddleston took the honours in race one, while Ian Mill was the surprise victor in the 300 class, seeing off Huddleston and Tim Batt in the second race to grab his first win in the series. Two victories for Adrian Wilson helped him back some points on the 250 class title rival Matt Shipley. Steve Hockney took his first season win in the 200 category Super Pole, but it was John Heath who was top dog winning both races. This is how things stand. Huddleston leads the 300 class. Reigning champion Matt Shipley still heads up 250, and John Heath leads the 200s. The focus now is very much on Margate for the first of two standalone P1 Aquacross events. And this weekend also has the added bonus of the introduction of a ski class, the original stand on watercraft, bringing the entry up to almost 40 competitors. Today's course is 1.6 nautical miles in length and is kidney-shaped in design. They'll be racing in an anti-clockwise direction in both of the weekend's races. Adrian Wilson is hoping to continue his Plymouth success here at Margate. Going to take a bit of a risk this weekend because I also run the ski the stand-up class as well. Um, so it's a big risk to take, but I'm sure I can overcome that and uh, clinch them points back. Jim Goodchild's hoping for better fortune in a campaign dogged by mechanical issues. Yeah, it's a fab location. We've not raced here before, so um, looking forward to it. Got some nice little waves out there. I've just been up this morning and tested my ski, and it looks quite calm, but it's actually got some ripples out there, so that should turn out a few different results and uh, have a few ups and downs. So it won't be a... Uh, whoever gets the lead, I don't think it will disappear into the distance. I think it's going to be quite grueling out there. Wayne Curtis working hard and hoping his efforts will be paid off with a first-time win. Bit of go go juice. Yeah, hopefully we get a good crowd down here. I mean, you know, there's a lot of people still turning up, but yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Just try and get some points and try and get a try and get a win, hopefully, if it happens. And Anya Colley's looking to continue her fine form of late. Yeah, really looking forward to it. It's a lovely venue. I'm looking around and there's a beach and the sea looks really nice. Actually quite a nice colour for England, so yeah, really looking forward to it. On to the action then. Tim Bat took the honours in the morning Super Pole race which meant he got the coveted pole position for race one. As the flag drops, 5,000 horsepower is unleashed on the Thames Estuary as the riders charge toward the first turn, and even though conditions look calm, they are deceptively rough. Jim Goodchild was the early race leader from Tim Batt in the 300 category, but it wasn't long before more mechanical problems curtailed his race not for the first time this season. Steve Robinson got a good start as he went in pursuit of his first podium of the year. Steve Hockney in the 200 class, looking to get the better of championship leader John Heath. Number 50, Chris Leach riding the Kawasaki Ultra, chasing 21, Ian Mool. This is home water for him as he sets about looking to regain precious points lost in the early rounds. Travel 6 is Russell Marmon, last year's 300 champion, but now competing in the Aquacross Cup. And here is first-time racer Chris Phillips on his Sea-Doo RXP. Meanwhile, watchful Wayne Curtis getting out of shape. And your colleague's one of two women racers here today. She's had several mechanical setbacks this year, but they could be behind her following a third-place finish in the earlier Super Pole. Riding with Ian Mool, he's in third, crashed out during Super Bowl, so he needs good results in both races today if he's to stay in contention for the 300 title. Duncan Johnston is third in the 250 class, behind Matt Shipley and Richard Rowe. Here is Shipley with rival Adrian Wilson not competing. He could make it a clean sweep this weekend. The white flag is out, as we've seen, which means one lap to go. Going into the final circuit, Tim Batt leads Dave Huddleston, Ian Moore and Chris Leach with Anya Colley in fifth. As the chequered flag came out, it was Tim Batt who takes the win in the 300 class over Huddleston and Moore. 
Matt Shipley and John Heath take the spoils in 250 and 200, respectively. of the results in all three classes with Tim Bat delighted to take what proved to be a hard-earned win in the tough waters of Margate. It's hard going out there, a bit chuffed though. It's been a long time coming, so I mean, so hard though, it's just nasty. Look from here, it looks flat. But out there, it's really swelling up. Yeah, it was um, yeah, it was good going, but very tough. It was uh, one of the toughest races so far I've done. I've been doing it a couple of years, and uh, yeah, very tough race, but brilliant battle between me and Tim. Uh, I'm hoping I can keep it up tomorrow, and uh, hopefully, without a bit of misfortune, the lanyard popping and bits like that, then um, yeah, I should be able to do it. Hopefully. I've been sort of say roped into a little have a go on a take part in the ski class here at Cross, so uh, I'm not going to lie, I'm borrowing Anya Colley's helmet. I've got another gentleman's goggles. This is uh, Karen who does uh, some PR and stuff. She is her jet ski, so uh, it's going to be an interesting day, but we'll see how we go. What freestyle jet ski champion Jack was talking about is this, the first of two stand-up races on this year's Aquacross calendar. The next will be at the final round of the year at St. Lawrence's Bay in Essex. Alongside Mule are Anya Colley, former world jet ski champion Lewis Goodchild and ex-Mountain DH world champ Lee Bertram. Fitness and experience really started to show in the latter laps. In the elite class, Anya Colley was leading the field on her hydro space until a front sponsor ripped off, causing her to retire with only a few laps to go. Number 14, Neil Smith, and 69, Lee Bertram, battled all the way to the chequered flag, but it was Bertram's Yamaha Superjet that finally pit Smith's Kawasaki SXR to the first overall Acrocross stand-up win. It's been an amazing, really nice weekend. You know, good weather, good racing. I think everyone's enjoyed themselves, to be honest. Oh, I'm really chuffed, actually. I really didn't know what to uh, expect coming in. But, um, I've got a bit of race experience in the past, so I you know, sort of brought that through and um, took it home. So, yeah, I mean, I love racing, and uh, this has um, been a great organised event. And, um, yeah, I'll definitely be back, definitely be back. And uh, hopefully there'll be a few more riders as well, which will make the racing more interesting, you know? It's hard work for an old boy like me, <laughs> but... Uh... 88 I bought my first ski and uh, here we are, 22, 24 years later, whatever it is, still, still going at it. The second race of the weekend, an exhausting 40 minutes plus one lap this time, so tiredness can really play a part in this one. Riding on board with Ian Mool as he grabs the whole shot with Goodchild, Huddleston and Bat in close pursuit. This is coming onto the back straight. Conditions have worsened slightly as the day has gone on. Batten Huddleston pushing hard, and Matt Shipley's right up there with the 300 runners, despite being 50 horsepower down. And Yacoli, who is racing both classes this weekend, slots into fourth in front of Rob Higgs and Wayne Curtis. It's a very good start by rookie racer Robert Higgs. He's in a battle with Wayne Curtis in the 300 class. Meanwhile, Ian Mill continues to lead Huddleston and Bat, making his Ultra 300X do the work as he powers down the front straight. John Heath on 118 in a race of his own as he leads the 200 class. The conditions really starting to chop up with the riders struggling to keep the power down. Meanwhile, dismay for Matt Shipley as he breaks down and is out of the 250 class. Huddleston continues to chase down Mool. While standard racer Neil Smith is another competing in Acrocross for the first time, he's on a borrowed Yamaha XZR. With Shipley out, he puts Smith in the lead of the 250s ahead of Higgs and Rowe. Steve Hockney and Steve Robinson dueling away down the front straight. And this is racer in the 250s, Richard Rowe battling with Anya Colley. Only the third time he's competed in P1 Acrocross, and he's looking good for a second place finish, which will be a great result for the rookie rider. White flag is out for race leader Ian Mool. Just one more lap to go. He's 
being pursued still by Dave Huddleston, who's not that far behind. Chris Leach has moved ahead of Tim Batt as he goes in search of his best result of the season. But the checkered flag goes up for Ian Mool as he wins at Margate. Results time with Ian Mool topping the 300s. Neil Smith is top dog in 250 and John Heath victorious again in 200 on what was a tough day of competition. Yeah, struggled a little bit today. Um, sort of second lap in, I got um, pins and needles in my throttle finger. Um, so it was literally second, third. I was, I was doing quite well. I think I was in third, third position or something and then started going tingly. Then it went numb and that was it. <laughs> Couldn't hold on then, that was it. It's uh, been a good weekend, to be honest, really enjoyed it. Uh, excellent event, really well organised. Uh, something totally different for me. I've been racing since 1994, closed course racing, um, but obviously this endurance race and first time riding a, or racing a sit-down ski. So it's been good. Yeah, it's been really good. Uh, this race I felt a bit uncomfortable. It still, it still looks, it still looks relatively flat, but when you're out there, especially at the top, it's pretty bouncy. I'm looking forward to Torquay. It's uh, a nice place to race as well. Nice, nice place. Fantastic, it's really rough out there. It doesn't look as rough as it is. Up the back, it's really, really rough. And me and Chris were having a right battle out there. He overtook me, I overtook him. My lanyard come out, I nearly fell off, I hit my ribs. Fantastic race. That's what racing's all about. It's tied at the top of the 300 standings with just 12 points covering the top three. Matt Shipley has a cushion in 250 and John Heath is comfortable in 200. Trophy time. And champagne time as well as the curtain comes down on a tough weekend of racing at Margate. Attention now turns to Torquay and round four of the P1 Agricross Championship. Well, that's all we have time for from here at Jet Ski World in Margate. Join us next time for more Aquacross action.